This game that you are about to witness is a thrilling fight between one of the established GMs in the world of chess. He's here on your screen. Yan Nepomnishi has just arrived at the board and he takes on one of the brightest young stars in the world, Gukesh. In fact, Gukesh is the youngest player in this tournament at the candidates and he's just 17 years old. Yan gets everything ready and there we have Gukesh who arrives. He has his jacket on the chair just in case if he needs it. It's an additional jacket that he has and he's come himself in a suit. So, and he has the Waka imprinted on it. Westbridge is his sponsor. It's going to be very exciting. Gukesh shakes hands and Yan starts the clock. What is Gukesh's first move going to be? He opens with 1d4. And definitely Gukesh will be looking for a win here with the white pieces. He did beat Pragnananda yesterday, which was a fantastic result for him. c4 played. And now Yan pushes his pawn to e6. The last time they played against each other was at the Tata Steel Masters, where Gukesh had gotten the better of Yan. G3 played. And I think there's some reason why Gukesh prefers this move order over knight f3. Uh, and, and it might have a lot to do with Yan's choices. D5 played here by Nepo. And Gukesh quickly puts his bishop on g2. So if all things go normally, this will turn into a normal Catalan after white brings his knight out to f3. But Yan thinks for a bit and pushes his pawn to c5. All of a sudden, we are in the Tarash territory. And let's see if Gukesh is well prepared here or will he take a lot of time. Gukesh is thinking about his move and maybe this is something that he didn't expect Yan to play. He takes the pawn on d5 and after around 3 minute thought, so clearly he's well prepared here. Now, White can take with the pawn and go into a pure Tarash. But white can also take with the knight. And that's exactly, sorry, black <laughs> can take with the knight. And that's exactly what Nepomnishi has done. He's taken with the knight. And this is very interesting because when I was young and, you know, growing up, I used to think that this position is equal. Why? Because black will take on d4. I will take back. By the way, that's what Nepo has done. I will take back. And what will happen then is that the pawn structure is symmetrical. By the way, Gukesh does not take the pawn immediately. He first castles. You will be left with four pawns here for black, four pawns here for white, two pawns here, two pawns here. That's what I felt. But over the years, what I have realized is that you also have to compare the quality of the pieces. And if you notice carefully, this bishop on c8 is blocked. While this bishop on g2 is amazing on this diagonal and this bishop is also open. So in a way, everything is working well for white for the time being. So black has to put some effort in order to equalize here. Gukesh now brings his knight back to b3 and attacks the bishop. The value of a bishop in this position is huge because you see, the two files are open, the position is not a closed one and the bishops are superior to knights in such positions. You will see that Gukesh is thinking. He wants to put his knight on c3 maybe, but then after takes takes, he does spoil his structure a bit. And that's the reason why he first kicks away the knight from d5. But in doing so, he's closed down his bishop and also weakened his d3 square where the knight can actually jump from b4. And that's exactly what Yan Nepomnishi does. He's now threatening to take the queen and then bring the knight to c2. So Gukesh brings his knight out to c3 and Yan brings his knight out to c6. Very interesting stuff here. Uh, and now maybe a3 you want to kick the knight away. But Gukesh plays first his bishop. He develops all his pieces and what he's claiming is Yan, your bishop is still not developed here on c8 and that gives me an advantage. Queen takes queen happens. 
and now Gukesh must take back with the rook. He takes it with the A rook. Interesting decision once again because you would imagine one rook goes here, the other rook goes on the D file. But rook A D1 played more concrete uh, play there and now knight comes to E5. And he wants to bring his knight to C4. So first Gukesh pushes the knight away. The knight has to go back. So knight will go back to C6. Nepomnishi has 1 hour 38 minutes and Gukesh has 1 hour 7 minutes. And you will now see the benefit of actually bringing the rook to d1, uh, a1. The reason being that after f4 that is played by Gukesh, he is not really afraid of the knight jumping to c4, which Nepo most likely will play, yes, because now he can drop his bishop back to c1. And the entire coordination of his position is completely fine. Imagine if the rook was on a1, it would have been behind and not so well placed. But now everything is fine. Nepo should now play the move a5. With the idea of a4, kicking this knight away, getting the c5 square for himself, it would be the best move here. a5, a4, great concept. But Nepo goes f6. And this is not particularly ideal. Because yes, this knight is well placed, but Gukesh can kick it away. How can he do it? I'm sure he knows it. Rook f e1, fantastic move. The idea is you want to bring your bishop here, push the knight away, and that will be greatly helpful to you. Nepo plays his rook to b8. So until now, he's not yet feeling that his position is so bad, but it could get very nasty if he's not careful. Gukesh brings his bishop here, attacks this knight. Playing b5 is literally not possible because of knight takes b5 and then you pick this up. So he goes knight b d6. All of black's pieces are in the first three ranks. White has more space. And now Gukesh goes knight b5. Very interesting decision. Because you see, he's attacking this knight and once it's taken, which most likely it will be, yes, knight takes and Gukesh takes back with the bishop. Now, you can't play b6, bishop, b7, which you wanted, and the bishop is not coming here as well. And pushing this pawn is not so safe. Maybe it's possible, and maybe Nepo can do that. But there's one thing which is working well for Nepo, and that is if Gukesh ever takes on c6, he can take back with the pawn, attacking the knight and the pawn here. So Gukesh may not want to take on c6 at any point. e5 is definitely something that Nepo can play here, but he plays king f7, quite passive. And I think Gukesh can slowly continue to now build his position. Uh, yes, he gets his bishop out to e3. That's a good move. The bishop is well positioned in the center. It's attacking this pawn on a7. And also the knight can jump to c5. Those are some great points there. a6 played. Now, it's very clear that Gukesh is not going to take on c6. By the way, the only thing working in Nepo's favor here is the time. He has 30 minutes, uh, sorry, 1 hour 8 minutes, while Gukesh is down to 29 minutes. A 38 minute time difference for Nepo is a good thing. Now, b5 played. Finally, Nepo wants to get his bishop out here, but at what cost? At what cost, sir, the c5 square has been weakened immensely and the knight jumps in there. It might also be a good time to shift this rook to the c file. So, Nepo plays his rook to d8. And I think you can either take, I guess taking is good, uh, and then bring, yes, he takes it, and then bring the other rook to c1. Because there is some juice down the c file. Nepo is thinking whether to take with the knight or the bishop. He decides to take it with the bishop now. So Gukesh has some choices now. He can put his rook on d1. He can put his rook on c1. He decides to play his rook to c1. A good choice because there can be some deadly discovered attacks here to get to win the knight on c6. Nepo puts his bishop to b6. Pinning in some way, Gukesh improves his king position with king f2. White's moves are simply flowing. All his pieces are together. The problem of bishop on c8 is not resolved. Even after 26 minutes, finally, 26 moves, finally, Nepo says, I'm going to give up my bishop. Guys, this is a massive, massive compromise here because 
White now has the bishop pair. You can look at Nepo's expressions. He knows that he is in big trouble in this endgame. Such a position is like a dream one for any technical player. It's just that Gukesh, whether he's in that mindset or not, has to be seen. He brings his king up forward. He has 19 minutes to make another 12 moves. Easily possible in this kind of positions. Rook d8 is played. And now, where does Gukesh create his next play from? He goes bishop b6. One idea is, of course, to start hurling your kingside pawns down the board. The other is to use your queenside pawns. I'm not sure which one he will use here. By the way, rook goes to d7. And now a fantastic move here is to play a4, takes, put your bishop here, attacking with f5. And later on, this is an excellent position for white. So Gukesh needs to find that, but he instead he goes rook d1. This is not a great, great idea because you need the rooks on the board to create play. And by exchanging the rooks, while Gukesh's minimal edge does remain, it's not going to be enough. Rook takes rook, bishop takes rook. This is not uh, great news for Gukesh because now Nepo plays confidently. He also is much ahead on time. He has 48 minutes. And sometimes that plays a psychological role for sure. Bishop c5 played. And now how does... Nepo continue, he goes h5, gaining some space, a risky move once again, because this pawn on h5 could become weak after f5, but first Gukesh goes b3, maybe he wants to play a4, the bishop goes back to c8, it's struggling to find a role in this board, on this board, but let's see if he manages to do that, a4 played by Gukesh, he is trying to play on the queen side, Create a weakness. E5. Nice move there. Nice move there by Nepo. Improving his bishop's position. And Gukesh takes on B5. I guess Nepo will simply take it back very quickly. Yes, he takes back the pawn. And Gukesh now plays his pawn to F5. And his point being, if you take this pawn, I'll, go to, I'll take the H5 pawn. I'm going to win that pawn. So he plays King G7. Gukesh now takes on G6. But Nepo can now take it back. But he plays bishop g4. What a nice move. Finally, the bishop comes into the game. And how? The bishop is beautifully placed. If you take, take, g6 will fall. In fact, black is the one pressing here. So Gukesh very calmly puts his bishop on c2. Trying to keep things equal. Bishop goes back to e6. And there is uh, actually no way much to create play king d2 has been played and perhaps it's time to pick up the g6 pawn for black nepo looking at how many moves have been completed because it's an important one and oh there is something that's happened here and the thing that has happened is that only 39 moves have been played but half an hour has been added in the clock and so the arbiter actually checks it out and says one more move and Nepo is smiling there with Gukesh. Well, it's not that tense a position, so it's actually fine. But imagine this happening in the heat of like some super complicated position that would have created quite a big, big problem there. And now Gukesh quickly plays his bishop and now the players will get additional time. King takes g6, draw has been agreed because black has equalized the position and uh, good defense there by Nepom Nishi and uh, Gukesh tried, tried his best. In fact, he had a great, great opportunity. He's now writing down his moves because in order to reach move 40, he, he had to stop writing at some point. Uh, but yeah, a golden opportunity missed there for Gukesh. I think Jan Nepom Nishi knows it pretty well that he had a great opportunity uh, that he has dodged a bullet here we spoke to him after the game and let's hear what he has to say yeah and today you made a draw with Gukesh mm -hmm. uh, did you feel under pressure at any point well I mean I uh, think I mixed up most terribly in the opening and I got just uh, something looked like a turn in the worst position without any hopes like to equalize 
make eternal rewards, and then uh, I mean I, I think I think it was quite close to quite close to losing at some point, but uh, yeah, somehow like when he allowed me to play e5 and maybe especially after b3 he created and also wow. some uh, some counter chances for me. So maybe at, th at that point, uh, yeah, I already felt like okay, I'm going to save the game, but uh, till the very like like few last moves, I think yeah, I was I was, I was just ugly. Can you share with us what was it you mixed up in the opening? Uh, no, I can't because okay, I don't even know myself. <laughs> and and uh, rook d1 when Gukesh went. Yeah. Did you feel a4 was a strong move there? A4 immediately, yeah? Yeah, A4. Yeah, it could be. I mean, okay, the position is... I mean, I'm not sure it's winning, but it's um, it's very, very huge advantage. And I mean, it's basically a two-results game, and uh, I would say like 60, 65 for white to win, and like the rest uh, for black to be lucky. So, I mean, of course, position is better. So after the Rook's trade, do you felt a little bit more confident uh, about your chances? Maybe, it, maybe a little bit, but... I mean, still, I felt like it's very close to... I mean, maybe I can hold with some fortress, but um, I wasn't sure. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you.